All right, today is June 27th, 2012. Right in a repossession for a Honda Civic, 01 Honda Civic. We just drove by it. That's it sitting right there on the street. There's a Hispanic gentleman getting in that maroon vehicle in the driveway. He's in the driver's seat right now. So we will wait for him to back out. And we'll back up to the front of it. In the meantime, we'll get the arm ready. vehicle and he's opened up. Okay. He opened the rear door. Closed it. Now he's gotten back into the driver's seat. He's just sitting there with the door open. So we're going to go ahead and get to work here. There's a vehicle behind it blocking it so we don't need to worry about somebody coming out and jumping in it and pulling away from us because we've got it blocked from the front now. All this stuff to think about while you're repoing. and got out of the vehicle, basically just watching us work. No one's come out of the apartment. on. I'll take that off. to us, just stayed out in this car, didn't even go in and warn anybody or anything, so, get out of here. Fast and clean, that's how we like them.
All right, so we just pulled out from picking up that silver Honda Civic. You can see it on the back of my truck up there on the road. And as I was leaving the area, I checked our inbox and we had another repo come over while we were doing that one. And so I checked the address and we were actually just driving by it. It's here in a trailer court. And this is a dead end road right here. You can see this fence comes along here and the entrance to this place is out on the main road. And there's like a fence back here that I can't get in from. And then it just dead ends. But that uh, silver Chevy Aveo right there is our uh, next vehicle. It's up in the driveway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the silver Honda. We're gonna come around the front. We're gonna back up in here. We're gonna hook the Aveo, get keys for it, and get it out. And then we'll get it transported. And then we'll come back and get the Honda. That's how you do back-to-backs like that. In the same area. Check this out. Sprinklers! Alright, gotta time these just right. They're rotating back and forth. Right there. Oh. Woo! Got through dry. So yeah, we'll go find a parking lot for this, get it dropped, and then we'll get the, the Bayo on, re on video. You get a lot of viewers that ask when and if I ever use the boots that are on my truck, and the answer is yes, I use them, and the when is right now drop a vehicle that's still in the vicinity of where I repossessed it from, even though it's pretty good odds that I'm far enough away that they wouldn't just stumble across it, I still don't want that to happen. And I didn't get keys from them, which a lot of people ask, why do you stop and get keys? Well, when you get keys, you know the person can't come take the car back from you, unless they have a separate set of keys, I guess, but it, it minimizes that possibility. But in this case, I know for a fact I didn't get keys, and if they happen to come driving along and they see the vehicle, I don't want them getting it back in the few minutes that I'm gone executing this other repo, so that's where the boots come in nice and handy. Let's go get us a Chevy Aveo. So this is the entrance to the uh, mobile trailer court. We actually uh, know the owners of this place. I've had them a number of years ago through my uh, wife's family and uh, so we actually know the people that own this whole place in case there's some kind of a situation it's always good to have somebody on your side but uh, we will hope for no conflict on this situation as we do on all situations this is the dead end street we were standing behind that fence right there walk along those behind that fence until we spotted the unit up in the driveway. I believe it's this long skinny one right here. Nope. This one. Oh, there's now a car behind it. <laughs> Just in the few seconds we were gone. Can you believe that? Less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. I was gone. There's now another car blocking behind it. So I'm gonna put a GPS device on it. And uh, we'll have to keep checking this address until out of the car moves. Haha, <laughs> that sucks! That's repo. Alright, so I just got done pinging the device. Make sure that it's uh, returning a signal. Make sure that uh, it's got a good battery life. After we ping it, then we hit the battery status. And it says right now, it says, please wait. And it's pulling back the battery status. We'll get a full we'll a reading on how much battery juice is on this thing. Uh, no status received from device. Verify the device is fully charged. Good digital coverage area. So, so you can, sometimes that happens. You just won't get a good read. I'll stick it out on top of my truck. And we'll ping it again. 
usually on the second try, if it doesn't work on the first try, the second try almost always comes back with a reading, especially when you stick it on the top of the truck. It doesn't have to be that perfect line of sight, but anything can block. A lot of satellites go across the southern sky. We've got a lot of wildland fires south here right now that are putting up huge plumes of smoke, and that thick smoke can actually affect the GPS signal somewhat. Uh, if you can't get a direct line of sight signal, then it uses what's called the, uh, <clears throat> it's an advanced GPS, uh, GSMR network where it actually does a triangulation between three different towers, and if it can't successfully hit three towers, or if one of the three towers is super heavy overloaded with cell service right now, and phone calls and stuff, and dropping calls, that can, you know, there's different technology things you have to understand about GPS and how it works when you're uh, using it. It's not a uh, perfect technology, but it is a dang good one, and it's uh, very reliable to a point where we use it quite often. But uh, we'll let it do its ping again here. Pull back the status, and then we'll put this GPS device on the uh, mark the vehicle that we're doing the repo on, and then we'll periodically. I'm gonna go finish, go get that one that we just put the boot on. Go get, take care of the transport now. Get it done, and then we'll come back up. Hopefully, the BMW behind it will be gone. If it's there for the night, then it's there for the night. There's nothing we can do about it. Tomorrow, that BMW will most likely leave again. And if the Aveo leaves too, we come here in the morning and both vehicles are gone. Then we ping the Aveo and we go get it and where it's at. I'd actually prefer get it. At home, I say that all the time just because it's easier on people, but if people are going to pull them up in their driveways like that and they're going to block them in with another car from behind, we got to do what we got to do. You know, it's the job. We can only spend so much time on each one. All right, so we just got our read back on our location again. We'll hit our status. And looks good. 71%. That's enough to go place it. While you're walking up to a residence like this, a number of things going through the head. Like, uh, obviously, you want to be watching windows, make sure someone doesn't peek out and catch us putting the GPS device on the vehicle. Otherwise, it's pointless, as I've said a number of times before. So, I know we've got an open window right here at the front, so I'm going to stop talking for a sec. smooth. There was no movement on any of the windows. You got good placement on the frame. So we'll uh, go get that other one transported and go from there. What, sir? I said, how are you doing? Good, what can I do for you? Well, that's what I want to know. What can I do for you? Nothing. I don't need any help on anything. Well, I'm part of the neighborhood watch right here. This is private property. Oh, gotcha. You know, watch your, you know, Sunglasses, hat on backwards, you look like kind of a shady character. I am a shady after, character. If you're after a fault, I, I don't have a problem. But, but if you're in here, yeah, no, that's it's something like that. Okay, then I don't have it. All right, thanks for thanks for talking to me. All right, have a good day, sir. Alright, BMW's gone. 
This is our first time back to the address since uh, going and dropping off that Honda Civic. The freeway had an accident on it, so it was a parking lot. Took over an hour to get down there and back. But it looks like it was enough time for our other vehicle to leave. We'll watch the roof on this thing, make sure it's not too low. Looks okay. address and tell us to come pick up the vehicle but if you want you guys can get some stuff out of it before we take it yeah just grab some stuff uh you have keys but you think i can get it back or tomorrow just call the bank and then just tell them we they'll know we picked it up because it'll be at their location in springville uh, and so just call them tomorrow and they'll tell you why they had us come pick it up and then they'll tell you what you got to do to get it back uh, but if you want to get some stuff out you can I hook to it. I'm gonna see if I can get some keys from her and just drive it out of here. Now that we've made contact, it'll be a lot easier. I'll keep the driveway blocked here for a second. I'll just walk up there and talk to her. My loud engine out of the driveway so she can hear me. You got a Yavis? Yeah. Okay. And then do you know the number to call them? Yeah, but it, I don't know. Yeah. You got it. You got their number? Okay. I was gonna give you. That. I was gonna write it down for you. The the, the collections number. To talk to. Uh -huh. And you think if I pay everything, you I have tomorrow? Then you should be able to go pick it back up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. skinny driveway. She barely speaks any English. We'll pull down here a little bit. Got this old man that walked up to us earlier watching me.
on. I like it when they go that good. It's just not often enough, you know? And the freeway is still a parking lot southbound, so we're gonna take a break, get a bite to eat, let some uh, traffic simmer down, and then we'll transport this one. Oh, and then what? On to the next one. I was just thinking about this as I was coming into this town. This one in particular is called Springville, Utah. There's two ways into this town. There's the north entrance and the south entrance. The south entrance has the Walmart by it. The north entrance has the JB's and the liquor store. Anyways, so anytime a good repo man is driving anywhere, he's always aware of why he's going the way he's going. We don't just go left for a random reason or go right for a random reason. I actually, when you become a demigod in this freaking business, you figure out everything about it. There's some really cool attributes about it. One of them is efficiency. And in efficiency, you figure out all the time. I've talked about efficiency on here about the MBA tracks camera system. And it, trust me, it's infused into any good business owner who learns how to efficiently run their company because you can bleed money out of an, a company that's running inefficient anytime. You can, I can go to any business and tell you where they're leaking. You know, it's, it's easy to do. It doesn't matter what industry, but in repoing, one of the things is we drive a lot of miles. UPS drives a lot of miles. And there's actually a study on the internet. Go, go Google it, where you, they figured out that left turns take more time and cause more delays. And so they mapped out and figured out that you can take a certain number of right turns to get somewhere and it'll always be faster and you'll make less stops based on how traffic patterns are and stuff. And the whole study goes through how everything they, they figured out about it and stuff and they cut down like 12 million miles a year nation, worldwide, not nationwide, worldwide uh, for their uh, all of their stuff. You know, and they figure, you know, obviously planes don't make left and right turns, but anything on the ground that has to build traffic signs and lights and stuff like that, all most, you know, motor carrier vehicles. So I started applying that to my business and I figured out that there's a smart way to go in and out to every address by taking as many right turns as possible. You get there faster, you hit less traffic, it's really cool. So I wanted to share that secret with you guys. Go Google that uh, uh, study that uh, UPS did on left turns. I'm guessing you probably just type in UPS and left turns and it shouldn't come up. It's pretty, pretty easy to find. But the other thing is we always, if there's two ways in and out of a town, always go in the one way and then go out the other way. The likelihood that you'll pass one of your repos goes up exponentially. And it's, it, you, we, like I said before, anytime you're driving anywhere, you're driving that way for a reason. You're efficiently going to your address and there's certain key things you're doing along the way, like checking lo local restaurants and gas stations and things like that. People shop around where they live and they're more likely to stop somewhere close to their home. As you get within a certain radius, usually about five miles of their house, and especially when you get down under a mile or two, check every parking lot. I find repos all the time just before they get to their house or just because they just left their house. And I follow them and I get, it's hilarious, not hilarious, it's neat to watch how driving efficiently that goes up exponentially. Teach your drivers that every time they go into a town, don't go in and out the same way. You're passing the same place twice. Yeah, you're passing at different times, but if you, you know, it's better to come in one way, go through town, and go out the other way. It's same with neighborhoods. If there's two ways in and out to an address, when you get down to the neighborhood level, go in one way, even if it's not the fastest way. You'll come across your car at a neighbor's house, or you'll come, you'll pass a church that you wouldn't have passed going the other way, and your car will be in the parking lot. You just go in and out of a neighborhood and a city in any area you're driving different ways every time. If you go to that address four different times, take four different ways there and you'll learn the neighborhood inside and out. That's one of the key things that's going on. The second thing is you're checking more areas and it's just a more efficient way of driving. Teach your drivers how to drive efficiently.
Use the special boards that I made. They're just two by eights, two by tens. They got duct tape wrapped around them because they're gonna crack. They're gonna get splintered and stuff, so you don't want them to fall apart on you. So the tape actually holds them together. Yes, duct tape is good for something. Just shouldn't make major repairs with it, you know. But this is what this is a good application of duct tape right here. This is what it's meant for. You wrap it, wrap it, makes it more versatile. But we use these because I've got a special attachment on here that I added on that's aftermarket that allows me to have my universal receiver hitch for getting trailers. Uh, which comes in really handy, but this sticks out a little bit more, so you want to be careful with oil pans and stuff. You don't want to have that thing go puncture up into it. It could be like a can opener, just pop right through the bottom of an engine. So I made these little wedges. They go over that, and that picks up, and it gives a little hard buffer, and I just do it on vehicle. a lot of vehicles. It doesn't even come anywhere near the oil pump but on pan, but on certain vehicles, it's right on it. VWs are the worst. So a lot of people have asked me, why do you put that little spacer in there, you know? And what is that? That's it. And I'm working on a better design so that I don't have to use that. Innovation is the key to humankind. windows down. I like to, just as it goes between dusk to dawn, it gets dark, dusk to dawn. When it goes into dusk, it starts to get dark outside, especially if you have tint on your windows like I do. I like to roll down my windows about halfway just to, you know, smell the smells and stuff. And at the same time, it also allows your eyes to adjust as it gets darker outside. And then you can see sooner than other people. You always want to have the advantage of the dark. <laughs> and we always train our eyes to be able to, be able to see in pitch blackness. We spend a lot of time in the dark doing what we do. And you get to where you know shapes. You'll know that you're making a model in the back of a trailblazer, old Ford trailblazer. I can see it in a dark parking lot at the end. And all I've got to see is a silhouette of light behind it. And I know that's a black 04 freaking. It's, it's the right shape, size, sticks out far enough, sticks above far enough. You know, it, it just it gets to where you get that good at night with your eyesight. A lot of people have been asking questions about Leila, why she's not in the back seat anymore. So I'll answer that one as my final part of this video segment. And uh, she's fine, she's at home. The main thing was she started slobbering on me a lot. I can't handle the slobber, she's gross. She got to where she was constantly on the back seat. And she would dig the crap out of my shoulder with her claws. So yeah, she was becoming an annoying roommate. And second of all, she sheds. Dobermans don't shed a lot of hair. They probably shed the least amount of hair out of any dog I know of next to poodles that don't shed at all. But I can't do hair. I'm like a hair of foam. Not really, but I just, it, it's, I think my back seat was growing a beard. And so just, you know, when she's in her shedding mode and when she would be on her period, oh my God. Yeah, just take your tampons away from your girlfriend for a freaking three weeks and see how wonderful life is. Freaking, oh. You ever think you'd be putting a diaper on a dog? Peace out.